the Pune Auto Brick Society. As the president of the society, I welcome you all to this grand evening of coordinated case discussions. I thank Dr. Shailesh Hadgaukar and the Pune Association of Spine Surgeons for being so active, so vibrant, and so dynamic and organizing such wonderful events. It was during the COVID time that we turned online and we started having a maximum number of online activities. Thanks to COVID, we even have now have a, a continuation of Ortho TV. And so we have a lot of these discussions mm -hmm. online. And today we'll all benefit from a lot of experienced speakers sharing with us their knowledge and their skills. I now, uh, I ask Dr. Sherry Chadwakar to uh, initiate the proceedings. And I welcome you all again on behalf of the Pune Orthopedic Society and the Pune Association of Spine Surgeons. Thank you, Dr. Vegas, for a great support. And as always, uh, I also would like to thank Dr. Yogesh Kandalkar, who is the Secretary of Pune Orthopedic Society, and you all, uh, colleagues, uh, my co-host for uh, today's uh, Spine Connect webinar is Dr. Abhay Nene. Uh, and this goes long back since the COVID time when we had started the season one and season two. We are con continuing that season uh, with this interesting case discussion forum. And this is mainly a interactive forum where practices which we all are doing and we are getting a lot of interesting cases. How we are dealing it today, what all are the updates what all are the upgrades and that's what we are going to discuss in this forum and you, you can always send questions to us we are going to include your questions in our forum uh, uh, the, uh in, in this today's session dr dhiras sonone and dr rajesh parasnis will be the academic chair and we have two phenomenal uh, brilliant spine surgeons with us uh, dr tushar devre from pune dr tushar pisar from pune dr pramod bilare from pune sanjiti hospital is my colleague and Dr. Pallav Bhatia. They will be presenting the cases and we have some fillers also to keep this uh, session interactive uh, with myself and Dr. Neni. Uh, let's begin with our cases. Uh, I introduce uh, and welcome Dr. Pramod to start the shot. Over to you, Dr. Pramod. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so I'll be sharing the case. This is an interesting case. Uh, since it's a start, I'm an opening batsman. Just let's keep it light. So this will be a very um, easy case. By the same time, a quite intriguing case, like what exactly goes into the management part, what is what goes into the diagnosis part. So I'll go directly to my present. Is, is my slides visible? Yes. Oh, somehow. Okay. Yeah. So I'll go with this. So the case is interesting. This is all what we uh, see often but tend to neglect osteoporosis of young. So this is a 24 year old female. She presented to the outpatient department in Sancheti with severe mid and low back pain, some girdle pain, difficulty in change of postures, and also gives not much significant history, a trivial fall maybe, which was there, not again very significant to explain her symptoms, but had a postpartum history of four months and she was presently, lact presently lactating and yeah, she had uh, given a birth uh, yeah. to Dr. a Gilani, young I patient. I would like to ask, Dr. Yeah. Nene, what is the youngest patient, you, if you remember, you have seen in uh, your practice with osteoporosis so i think yeah. it's a it's a great topic to start with pramod because this is a less spoken about problem people yeah. actually are in denial and yes there are spine surgeons who actually end up seeing these people who have osteoporosis so young people with unrelenting back pain with no you know no specific mechanical cause uh, you've got to do their dexa scans and of course do their blood works and you may find so to answer your question straight up uh, dr shailesh um, I have treated like 26 and 27 year olds for anti osteoporotic uh, medications and they've all done well. The yeah. problem being that because there's no track record and there is no, uh, you know, US FDA approval for the drugs that we use for uh, pre menopausal people or pre menopausal ladies, that becomes a bit of a challenge and the endocrinologists will vehemently oppose us treating them with anti osteoporotics. Yeah, Absolutely. do you believe it's mainly the hormonal imbalance which uh, causes this early age osteoporosis? Like, uh, 
pregnancy or any other metabolic disease like low testosterone is one of the common common problems in males but uh, once again you know you across the board get investigated for all the all the relevant hormones but you don't necessarily land on a problem and that's where there's a diverse divergent in treatment between the clinicians as we call ourselves orthopedic surgeons and the uh, endocrinologists they the endocrinologists which is the opposite camp will delve in diagnostics and the patient will continue to suffer and i am of i bat on the front foot i just start them on anti osteoporotic treatment and deal with the consequences while the endocrinologist is scratching around sorry for saying this but this is the truth yeah, yeah. No, it's a, the term called as the postpartum uh, spin, uh, spin, spinal osteoporosis is there and it's established in selective patients of uh, women with uh, early pregnancy or uh, young age pregnancy and there are uh, patients with severe osteoporosis in this young age. Absolutely. If you recollect uh, Pramod and Shailesh, uh, Dr. Kunal Shah who worked with you and now yes. worked with us has actually had, yes. uh, published uh, a series of two cases of 20 something women who have had fractures uh, mm -hmm. de novo fractures after uh, or during postpartum uh, yes postpartum. yes yeah. like one one similar article has been published by dr adgaura himself and yeah. which actually talks about the postpartum or the pregnancy related osteoporosis so uh, i'll just continue further this on examination didn't have any significant finding the slr was free in neuro if at all something there was a Round back deformity at the thoracolumbar junction and not Pramod, much significant. Uh, Pramod, your uh, slide is uh, not seen. Probably uh, the presentation is showing a different slide. Can you just check on that? Uh, what is seen now? The x rays? Physiology of osteoporosis in young adults. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's a different one. So I'll. Okay, I'll share it again. Yeah. Though normally in our routine practice, we don't do DEXA scan or anything for young patients because we don't suspect this. This is mainly for selective patient after appropriate clinical examination and the history. Yeah. yeah. Can you yeah. see my x-ray now? Yes. yes. yes x-ray yeah. seen. So, yeah. yes. So, as discussed earlier, you can very well see that this patient has a, a round back at the thoracolumbar junction and a very badly looking x-ray. In fact, a couple of times I checked that the patient name and age, whether it's the same patient or is it really a different patient. That happens quite often in a, a busy OPD that uh, you might see a different patient or a different x-ray has been handed over to the patient. But here you can see a diffuse osteopenia, there are biconcave vertebrae, multiple level and you can see very well at the thoracolumbar junction, there are multiple such vertebrae. And that, in fact, uh, prompted me to get her MRI done to just rule out the pathological causes. And here you can see a lot of them. I just named them. Uh, so you can see those wedgings and biconcave vertebrae right from D8, D9, D12 levels. And the rest of the vertebrae looks okay. The intervening disc looks okay. But and P2 sagittal uh, T2 sagittal thoracolumbars, you can very well see that. Even sagittal, you can very well see that. And uh, there is marrow edema or hypointense signal changes on T1 suggestive of bony marrow edema. Also, the same could be very well seen on a stir images that there is an hyperintense signal in these areas. But on an actual maybe, cut, uh, you can know that this point, uh, Tushar or uh, either of the Tushars could tell us how this is different from a pathological, pathological MRI. Yes. Dr. Dish, uh, Tushar Devre, maybe first. Yeah. So uh, basically, Pramod, can you run through the MRI back and forth? So yes, while yes. those are watching and this. So Tushar. this is T1, T2 actions. So you can just keep running through it while Tushar speaks. So we'll save time. Yes. So basically, yes. uh, there is marrow edema on T1 weighted hypointense, which shows a fresh, probably a acute on chronic uh, fresh compression fracture. There is no retropulsion or any cord compression. The disc is spared. That means. There is no sign of any other pathologies. Looks like uh, there is some ALL uh, fusion along with the anterior osteo osteophyte, spondylophyte bridging, which looks giving it like acute on chronic situations in certain images what uh, Pramod had shown. Definitely uh, the biconcave disc which shows uh, here you can see there are certain levels which has this anterior uh, fusion kind of status. The biconcave disc 
definitely some metabolic cause to it which leads to uh, such compressions at 26 year old uh, of age which is uh, maybe a possibility of uh, hyperparathyroidism or any other patients with PCOS with other hormone imbalances or other things these are quite common in younger females to give this type of pictures correct how many of uh, you will uh, really think of a uh, multiple level fracture in a young patient myeloma whether you will screen the patient uh, along with the dexa scan dr dheera yeah i would yeah i would do so and uh, myeloma is for, uh, is one of the things that i will rule out myeloma is one of the cause of such picture in young patients yeah that normally yes. comes in our mind any any other remote cause which you have seen in your practice, uh, Doctor uh, Tushar Pisar? Uh, actually, I I have seen one patient with abnormal parathyroid hormone with such picture. So hormonal or a ma malignant cause is the thing which I will uh, think of after seeing this kind of picture. Ramon, based on this MRI, can you say that this is not myeloma? Uh, uh, based only on MRI uh, would be a difficult thing to comment would on. You, but would you want to err a, a towards myeloma or to against myeloma? Against myeloma. Any uh, reason why? Just for the benefit uh, of the viewers. Just, okay, so here, uh, the if you see the STIR as well as sorry, T1 as well as the T2, there is some fat preservation there in the vertebra, the introsious part of it, which goes against malignancies. So, and also the edemas at the end plates have some, something called as a resolving picture. So, it is acute or subacute in nature. Seems like there were fractures, but it is already in a healing stage. So, that goes more in favor of uh, some non-malignancy causes or so-called benign causes. Also, Plus, in a myeloma, you see some speckling, some speckling yes, in, the, yes. in the content of the vertebra and you don't yes. see the uniform and looks very, very clean. So, osteomalacia yeah. doesn't have to be your first diagnosis. First but diagnosis. These inputs are coming in and just keep it going. Yes, yes. What, absolutely. what, what blood test will you do, Dr. Pramod? If, so, if uh, like basic it, one, yes. Yeah. So, uh, here the next uh, thing in action was the lab parameters and the lab parameters which were done with the osteoporotic profile, which involves not only the hemogram, ESS, CRP, but a battery of investigation like serum calcium, the serum uric acid, the alkaline phosphatase, and one of the cause which was mentioned by Dr. Tushar, uh, the primary hyperparathyroidism. So PTH levels and vitamin D levels are crucial in such cases. The DEXA scan, yes, it will help you to may not diagnose but it will help you to at least document the level of osteoporosis the patient has based on the x-ray and as well as the mri it's very clear that the patient has higher level of uh, osteoporosis the bmd scan or the densitometer will be definitely less in these cases so for not for the diagnosis part but at least for the documentation part before starting the treatment and then for probably check on the follow-up treatments, whether the DEXA has improved, will definitely help in these investigations. Yeah, but myeloma also is like TB. There are so many different yeah. ways. So, like secretory and non-secretory myeloma, you see the different picture altogether in this myeloma. Yes, yes. yes. So even the blood test, I, I completely agree. And even the blood test, uh, battery of investigation, just to rule out um, a myeloma, which is the serum electrophoresis and urine benzones proteins. These would be of paramount importance in such cases where we would have got in past, we have got surprises. It doesn't spare the ages. You can see myelomas at different age groups, though common in an elderly in a fifth to sixth decade or more than that. But uh, myelomas in a young adult, especially the light chain myelomas are very well known. Yeah, uh, and basic investigation for benefit of all of us, we just send a basic one like workup and the minute you see if, if there is anemia, that's one very, very important thing. Yes. A lot of people, not females normally, we have anemic. But uh, if there is hypercalcemia, that's one important thing, which is uh, turning towards uh, anemia, hypercalcemia, 
alkaline phosphatases ben jones proteins and yes sir raise electrophoresis yeah the simple yes sir over 100 yes sir these yes, are the things which we should uh, keep it in mind and tushar vishal wants to say something yes, uh, some of the radiologists what dr tushar devre sir said ki that uh, anterior osteophyte many of them may report it as a soft tissue mass or a kind of abscess and uh, that is again confusing so we have to keep infection in uh, mind in such cases while treating these patients because we are not discussing about infection because even tuberculosis can present like this with a soft tissue mass and many times peripheral mri where the radiologist doesn't care much about the reporting then they write it as a infection most probably infection yes so yes absolutely how many of us really rely on the three tesla mri many a times you get patient from these peripheries who have pointed or at times 1.5 tesla and they have this amazing uh, write up reports that it is showing cox or it is showing malignancy or even metastasis how many many of us really go and get a 3 tesla mri done for diagnosis 3 tesla so just for the record i think i don't uh, pallav sorry go ahead pallav no no uh, you i i was just telling ki 1.5 and 3 are almost uh, okay almost for same, me yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. For the spine, for, for the record, one point five Tesla is as good as three Tesla. So don't fall for the trap. For new neuro, which is brain, one uh, three Tesla has some additional offerings because of the differences in the cortex, cortex and the you know the uh, non cortex area of the brain. Absolutely, completely agree. What is your take on it, Dheeraj? Dheeraj is muted. ट most involved vertebra what would be the take dr tushar any uh, inputs uh, uh, no biopsy to be frank basically but yes a colleague opinion or a endocrine opinion will matter a lot because uh, age which is not in favor we are not suspecting any other pathology looks like metabolic cause so definitely their role becomes primary than ours to treat such patients Yeah. Would you like right. to do a PET scan in this? Pramod, all your reports are normal. All the blood tests were normal. Yes, so all, uh, apart from serum alkaline phosphatase, which was raised to two five four, only two fold raised. Other than that, everything was normal. Vitamin D, PTH, ESR, all normal. Everything, all And normal. DEXA scan, DEXA scan. DEXA scan was high. The T score was minus four. Minus four. Z, yeah. So Z score was also. The range it was minus four point two. Great. So I think it's a great question. How many of you, uh, Tushar Pisal, would you refer this to a an endocrinologist in your practice? First, I will do a PET scan to rule out the myeloma. The, even though picture is not like the more likely a osteoporosis, but I don't have to take a chances with that. And uh, once I am sure that it's not a metastasis, and if blood uh, investigation like parathyroid hormone and everything is deranged. then i will definitely involve endocrinologist i did sim i managed one similar patient but the age of the patient was 45 so next thing after uh, raise uh, means derange pts i referred that patient straight away to endocrinologist got it pallav you would also do a uh, pet yes Say, sir would yes, you sir. do a pet scan in this case cuz i strangely don't opt for a pet scan when the mri is so clean cuz uh, i kind of uh, you know in my head work around the heavy dose of radiation most of these are you know young young girls so if, if the patient is affordable then yeah like affording if... also radiation i think affording because nowadays is 10000 bucks or something shailu would you do a pet scan uh, probably i will refer this patient to a endocrinologist basically. and in your experience what is the feedback from the endocrinologist no i think uh, they are better judges at times in such difficult cases routine osteoporosis yes we do treat as a oste uh, orthopedic surgeon but when i really need there is some minus 5.5 or uh, you know kitty score or some young patient or any metabolic i normally refer them to a inter they yeah. they assess and evaluate well they have their different parameters and uh, probably in my practice i believe 
that uh, they can treat it well or maybe a rheumatologist who is uh, treating good osteoporosis for good some time right, right right otherwise we also can treat this there is no uh, difference that we cannot treat this so i think we all can... of us fully agree that we need to involve an endocrinologist at least for if nothing for uh, to get the you know things right like not to go out of your line tushar devre if the pet scan is normal would you refer to who would your first reference be another spine colleague or a rheumat or a, a, a guy uh, endocrinologist because that will definitely point out somewhere they will find something for sure right so i think we all agree on that pramod what yes. what did you do next yeah yeah so uh, i wanted to refer this to first was dr adgavkar he was on leave that time so i went for the last option i sent the patient to the endocrinologist and um, and the first thing after seeing was it was a it was a no brainer for her she said this is a pregnancy related osteoporosis no more investigation stop the patient uh, tell the patient to stop the breastfeeding and start the patient on anti osteoporotic treatment no more discussions uh, in uh, nene's nene sir's word dobara mat puchna ye diagnosis hai no more discussion so come, coming to the discussion part i like this ye kon hai log kahan se aate hai ye log so if you see the uh, the epidemiology i mean such a rare disease is osteoporosis in young it is just 4.1 or 10 i mean 10 million now this is a very rare thing we know everything almost all consensus is there about the post menopausal osteoporosis but osteoporosis in young being such a rare thing many of us would have seen this as a first case i'm sure seniors like nene sir dr adgavkar would have seen this multiple times in their career but for us it was new what is this and this is pregnancy and lactation related osteoporosis do rare it is one of the commonest cause in premenopausal osteoporosis usually seen in the third trimester or immediately after the delivery do the the etiology is unclear there is some genetic bias there is some family history to it some dietary habits also there is um, something called as pregnancy related osteoporosis or osteopenia and uh, controversy still exists between the pregnancy effect on bone there is an increased demand calcium demand leading to resorption and a hypoestrogenic state as rightly said by dr nene sir that it does have an impact on your bone uh, morphometry presentation usually is a severe back pain in the lower or the lower extremities leading to reduced mobility diagnosis more often than not is a diagnosis of exclusion you rule out any secondary causes by x rays mri dexas and the different lab parameters we discussed and the management strategy is cessation of lactation because you are going to start the patient on an anti osteoporotic treatment and that is a big no no for the child so the drug of choice is still confusing still no consensus but overall an anabolic drug definitely as an upper hand compared to an anti resorptive drug so teriparatide in most of the studies is given the best treatment available but also top up to with sand- sandwich therapy by denesumab or and or bisphosphonate does help so this was a case of pregnancy or lactation related osteoporosis thank you guys thank you dr adgavkar thank you for giving such a great podium to present our case thank you yeah uh, thank you pramod uh, i think uh, it was a excellent presentation and uh, really it opens up a lot of uh, things in our mind for young patient when they actually come to us for treatment and one thing about the uh, breast okay when we discussed with the endocrinologist they also take opinion of a gynec and a yeah. pediatric uh, 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 specialist and normally they say up to 6 months of feeding the patient uh, the mother is already uh, has done so i think that's good enough because they can start the top up uh, for baby and uh, it's good enough for the baby as well as mother that's the latest uh, evidence that's uh, what they talk about so what is your take uh, what's your take on it uh, dr nene uh just come again with that question the average age yeah so to stop the feeding because a lot of pay, pay, uh, females are very emotional about feeding for uh, the baby and how early you can stop the feeding no actually none of the uh, known osteoporosis drugs are um, safe for feeding they do they cross the placental barrier also Correct. so they have to stop yeah through the uh, breast milk also and they can have a, a huge repercussion on the growth of a child so it's not okay to give uh, breastfeeding women anti osteoporotic medicine so if they are sentimental about this 
they just have to deal with calcium vitamin d and you know be rambarose so i think it, we, there's no choice shailesh what do you think they yeah, have we have done it for a lady when we diagnosed it at the month four month post uh, pregnancy uh, and uh, this lady was very emotional we gave her two months of medications basic ones and at six months she stopped the uh, feeding and then we started the teriparatide and all the regimen thank you pramod for a wonderful presentation any which ways and we really enjoyed the thorough discussion uh, we would like to invite dr tushar devre for his next interesting case we are mainly talking about more cases today over to you tushar just a moment yeah so we have two tushars today so dr pallav will be the next presenter and then dr tushar again is dr dheeraj around dheeraj yeah, hi dheeraj dheeraj you are muted just say yeah dheeraj sir you are muted so uh, you are able to see yeah, my screen now i am here thank you shadesh yeah uh, you are able to see my screen now no uh, no no yet. not no. yet share new try new share okay shailesh we can take our next speaker if there is some technical issue yeah 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 we can yeah yeah please go ahead yeah uh, can you present it to pallav yes sir yes yeah so is the, is my screen visible yeah but we need to yes yeah you need to go up yeah so uh, this is uh, a 35 years old female and uh, uh, she had a history of fall and you just uh, enlarge your doctor present. yeah use play mode now yeah play mode yeah. slide mode yeah okay ha huh. fine thank you so uh, yes so uh, so she had a history of fall from height and she sustained this uh, sorry ha ah, so l2 burst fracture and she had asia uh, asia c neurology she had almost grade 2 plus power in her lower limbs and uh, with preservation of sensations and uh, she came to me after two days of uh, the history of this fall so so these are this is, is her x ray and uh, this is her mri so yes uh, dr pramod can you uh, can you just speak on on uh, what we are seeing on the mri yeah can we go to the x ray part yeah okay so this definitely looks like a 5432 l2 fracture and there is a reduction in height more than 50% collapse of the uh, upper end plate and also you can see an anterior and a middle column being involved where they have failed in flexion here you can see a, a tear drop kind of a fracture also you can see a fragment anteriorly and also there seems to be a fracture line running through the spinous process if i'm seeing it correctly so this is a potentially an unstable fracture or chance fracture where the anterior segments have failed in flexion and the posterior seems to be failed in extension uh do we have the mris yeah so you can very well see an anterior column uh, failure or posterior column failure with a retropulsed uh, posterior superior fragment um and a suspected a plc injury also in this case uh, not sure whether the patient has a fracture in the spinous process there is some changes in the interspinous area do we have a stir or a, a t1 axils there protein sagittal uh, uh yeah no uh, mri i have this one and uh, these axial images yeah okay 
so um, yes so there is uh, quite a significant retropulsion compromising 50% of the spinal canal and there is uh, a cauda equina evident cauda equina compression at that level with reduction in the cross sectional area by more than 50% so this is a a4 and uh, a b b1 type of b2 type of fracture again a unstable variant yeah so uh, so we all agree that we require surgical intervention in this case yes, yes so, absolutely uh, pallav yeah. can you explain to the audience why this is an unstable fracture that's the only question yeah. Without... yes so yes so uh, basically as uh, dr pramod clearly told that uh, there is a uh, it is a it is a burst fracture and there is almost 50% uh, canal comp uh, 50% reduction in the height of the vertebra uh this we call is at a unstable fracture because of three things one is that there is anterior column collapse because of the reduction in the height of the vertebra secondly there is posterior column injury because of the posterior ligament failure is there and thirdly that there is neurological deficit so all the three so we classify it in a telix score so according to the telix score it is 2 plus 3 plus 3 it is 8 so that's why it is a unstable fracture right uh, can i add few things to this yes dhiraj yeah yeah just to uh, define it as unstable uh, so the anterior column height has reduced um, uh, more than 40 to 50 percent that is one thing there is a kyphosis uh, of more than uh, 20 to 30 degrees so this is lying down position if the kyphosis might be more uh, the retropulsion if there is a canal uh, uh, occupancy irrespective of the neural deficit of more than 40 to 50% it is uh, considered as uh, unstable and obviously neural deficit also is uh, one of the component on ap view uh, the distance between the interpedicular distance the interpedicular distance widening significantly more than uh, uh, 10 to 20% is also a sign of unstable fracture and some degree of scoliosis is also a sign of unstable fracture so all these are uh, signs of uh, unstable burst fractures great so that adds clarity sure. go ahead follow yeah. yeah so uh, so everybody will agree that we require a surgical intervention in this case so now the thing is that uh, how to go about it uh, would someone consider only posterior approach would someone consider posterior plus anterior approach and if yes anterior approach then uh, how to go about it so uh, dr tushar tushar pisar how would you like to go ahead in this case generally nowadays i don't try to go anteriorly in fracture cases because you uh, you maintain a uh, posterior tension band by putting a screws and rods anteriorly you can push the retropulse fragment anteriorly and if i get a index screw in the fracture vertebra that helps me in restoring a part of anterior column and middle column along with the posterior tension banding band maintenance so yeah, what so you yeah so you would do decompression in this case Uh, yes, because there is neurological deficit, there is retropulsion. Okay, so uh, but do. you would do an uh, anterior column reconstruction in this case? Uh, no, I will uh, try to do uh, everything posteriorly. Yeah, everything posteriorly, but anterior column reconstruction would you do, or no. uh, you you won't? No, in this case, no, because most of the time I try to put an index screw, which uh, goes. Uh, I mean, so I try to put a longer index screw. Most of the people put shorter index screw. Uh, which goes uh, at least till the anterior one third so that helps according to me that helps me in maintaining the anterior column uh, height okay how many of you would like to do a anterior column reconstruction in this case yes i would stick my head out and disagree with uh, tushar <laughs> tushar uh, i think you given a good uh, reasonable explanation of your plan but for me I think there are few things. As a young, healthy patient, there's a three-column burst fracture. Three columns are gone, and uh, it's a lumbar spine fracture. So I want to save levels also in the long run. I'm expecting her to be normal neurologically. So I'd want to do a three-column reconstruction. In the past, I would do a P followed by an A approach. Now I do a all posterior approach, but I would definitely want to decompress, do a copectomy, and put in a cage and use that same bone and reconstruct the lordosis as well. That at least get the back straight. Uh, get away with a possibly a one plus one fixation. you know if i reconstruct the anterior column i can shorten my fixation and get a you know thorough thorough decompression yeah what so, about uh, good point shailesh yeah dheeraj would you do yeah i think yeah, uh, uh, yes shailesh please go on 
No, no. So all... I think uh, we, we need to understand that what is important, why the patient is come to us, the patient is come for whatever best treatment we can give. So all these things said and done, anterior reconstruction or decompression or instability, I think two things are very, very important is a good nerve root and nerve clearance and good understanding of uh, instability. We need to stabilize. You do anterior reconstruction uh, from behind, you can do it from anterior. Also, a lot of people will go anterior, do the corpectomy and put the cage and come back and fix above and below. But I think you need to uh, analyze it. If you can really do everything from all posterior, as Dr. Nene said, I think I will go with the same plan. Everything can be done posteriorly. If we can st short stop, uh, stop short, basically that will be useful for saving levels in lumbar spine. And we really can do it comfortably from all posterior. I prefer to you know, probably do two levels above, one level below, one level, uh, one uh, screw in the uh, fractured bone for preventing the rotation also. And we fix it on one side, then complete it open, decompress the spine. See if you need to do it. The minute you give position, I think there is a good chance this two days old patient will have good amount of translation. The PLL still looks intact. It will push the fragment anteriorly and re you really can do a good decompression and then you can fix it from other side. So I think it's a straightforward job for me only posterior with decompression. Yes, I totally agree with Shailesh. Ligamentotaxis will definitely help in this case and a fresh injury with a cleft there, a index screw below the end plate up to the anterior one third will definitely help. Rarely, we would endeavor doing the entire carpectomy and uh, anterior reconstruction with cage and bone grafting. So, what's your plan, uh, Dr. Dusha? And all posterior say anterior? Karna all, hai ya all posterior say anterior, yes. Okay, 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 yes. fine. Yeah, so, uh, so, so, uh, so, there is some component of translation as well in this case. It's just not a pure, uh, on x-ray, I feel there is some posterior element, PLC also is injured. PLC is there. If yeah. that's the, yeah, 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 yeah. So if that's the case, it's it's a translation. It's not ideally a typical burst fracture. The burst is anterior uh, and middle column only. Okay. So yeah. it's not a typical burst fracture. Hence what uh, it has been discussed from all posterior anterior can be done. Yeah. So uh, actually, let's get clarity because I thought Dr. Tushar Devre and Dr. Shailesh said they will not reconstruct the anterior column. They will only put index screws. So exactly the, like Tushar Pisal's plan. Yes. So can, can we have clarity on this? Tushar Pisal definitely said he will not reconstruct the anterior column. He will put a long index screw and save the anterior. Uh, uh, I think he, he has found that it is just a burst fracture. Hence, he has said this. Uh, I don't know. That's his, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Is what's his plan? Reconstruct the anterior column or not reconstruct the anterior column? I probably, because it's a fracture and in my practice, I have found it's significantly... Uzi, the field is significantly bleedy, you know, and that's really a difficult situation. There is a very high chance of dural injury uh, at the same time. So, theoretically, yes, I would like to do anti reconstruction, but practically on table, we actually can get away with uh, very that's comfortable that's with only posterior. Yeah, we don't need to reconstruct anterior. Tushar Pisan? Yeah, I agree with Tushar, uh, but on positioning prone, uh, there is a good chance that the <laughs> PLL, if it is partially intact, will push it inside, as Shailesh yeah. said. And with your own uh, decompression and other things, you can push it in. If you can achieve more than 70-75% uh, vertebral height, then you can skip a complete anterior job and doing Fine. a Structure. column no, no. reconstruction. Now you have no. you have so I have, a different, I have a different question in this way. How yeah. many of us, if only uh, doing posture surgery, irrespective of this case, want to regain the height to 70% and above. I think it's it's not that's the case. We instead, I try to avoid that uh, uh, achieving the height which is uh, uh, closer to the normal because with combination, the distraction between the fragment increases and the, the implant load increases and it, add, it adds to the failure. So instead, whatever is coming in place uh, in positioning, just accept it and fix in situ. So I don't want uh, other panelists comment on this. How so much? Dheeraj. How many of you uh, try to regain the height? That's the safest way. What Diraj you said, yeah. Because yeah. then you are not endeavoring anything else, and yeah. uh, the index screw loosening and other chances become very less by yes. following your guide. Uh, 
positioning is the key as i am saying from my first statement in this case if it is going to restore it is restorable we will try there are uh, sometimes through transpedicular or through the fracture site you can push in a bone uh, slivers or matchstick bone graft because you are going to decompress, you have good strong strut of a spinous process, at least one, one and a half spinous process. You can punch it inside below the PLL so that you can avoid getting that collapse or loosening or any uh, stress risers coming on the implant. That's also possible. Okay. Yes, that's possible. Right. And uh, during anterior reconstruction, I am always worried about second insult to the cord or dura. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you go that and uh, do a lot of work around Dura, it adds to second insert. Mm -hmm. Because I uh, I have a hospitals which are very near to highways. So a lot of trauma comes there. So whenever I open, there is significant damage to the cord. Immediately, if I add a second insert, that becomes a problem. So rather than uh, going and thoroughly decompressing and adding second insert, yes, add, uh, thoroughly decompressing is a very good idea. But by doing a posterior laminectomy decompression, along with the index screw in the uh, bone, which prevents me, uh, which helps me in maintaining the anterior column along with the posterior, rather than adding a, an, another second insult, it's better to do just posterior, according well, to me. I hear who don't want to reconstruct the anterior column. We still want votes from Dheeraj and Pramod. I'm the only one who wants to reconstruct the anterior column. I'm still sick. Uh, no, no. So I, since I'm... three column is injured, I will uh, I will go with the anterior reconstruction as uh, Dr. Nene said. What about you? Uh, with 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 uh, see, uh, this is not the case for only posterior surgery because all the three columns has been damaged. Uh, so this is not a typical burst fracture. That's that's the only point I want to raise. Fair enough. So it's three against. Yes. Yeah, it's an unstable burst, but I agree with the Pune group. I think. Uh, I will not reconstruct right. anteriorly. I'll just stay behind, do posteriorly, and do a thorough decompression. So uh, my vote is for only posterior, not to reconstruct anterior. Lovely. And just FYI, I mean, for my information, the guys who will not do anterior reconstruction, how many levels will you fix? Two plus yeah. two, three plus three, yeah. one. two plus two, two plus two, Toshar, two, two plus two, two plus two, two. Yeah, all two plus two. Okay, that's cool. Okay, uh, what was done then? Let's go ahead. Yeah, so I uh, went on and I uh, reconstructed the column because I wanted to save levels. That was the first concern. And obviously to reconstruct the anterior column and uh, to uh, decrease the failure or decrease the stress on the other screws was my main uh, aim. So that, that's why I did this. So any comments? Okay. What sort no, of why, why expandable cage? That's the only comment I have. Nee, expandable just because as Tushar uh, said, to reduce the uh, the insult on the cord. Of the to, the cord. The, to reduce the insult on the cord, I put the expandable cage. And, uh, another thing, uh, expandable helps in a lumbar level because you cannot cut the root in yes. a lumbar level as uh, you, are, you can cut in thoracic. So as expandable in lumbar, it's comparatively safer compared to the Thoracic, that's right. Okay, so I have uh, I have to some other comment on this. So regarding the controversy of uh, what what is mentioning about the handling of the cord, just the pushing back of the fragment also is equal handling of the cord. What you are mentioning, the punching back the fragment is also equal handling. What the fragment which is punched anteriorly is easy to remove anyway. It's because there is no adhesion as such. It is just a fragment. We can just take it out from the side. Through a tra trans pedicular approach, and we are going by removing the pedicle many times while by pushing the fragment. Many times you don't take out the pedicle as well. So that instead, so that with a compromise, uh, uh, with not a significant uh, approach, we are many times pushing the fragment that may add to the insult. So that is one thing. Second thing uh, regarding the expandable cage, I can uh, uh, I can accept this kind of cages uh, uh, for a trauma. But not uh, uh, for uh, uh, for tumors, not for but not for trauma because this cage is for, full of metals. <laughs> so there is a cage with a with with a better inside. Hardly any bone uh, goes within the cage, and that goes with expansion. Though it is easy to insert, with expansion further distraction within the graft happens, and there is no place for put the graft down also. So it many times this is this uh, goes for a, a non union or a may add. In long term, it may not uh, survive. That's the only thing I'm worried about such a expandable cage. 
uh, no she uh, so uh, this case i did almost four four and a half years back and she is still in follow up and uh, there is no loosening and do, uh, so she is fine till now good okay. i think it it's a well well done case and uh, there are different ways to skin a cat uh, pallav has done a very good job uh, by doing reconstruction but uh, i think a lot of uh, times we really can get away without doing the reconstruction by just doing posterior stabilization putting the index screw uh, and doing a good decompression uh, probably this will fall back uh, comfortably and he has saved a level the lower level he really could uh, save uh, and most of the panelists yes, have told yes. two levels they will fix below and above so that is one thing which allow has achieved by doing yes. this anterior reconstruction that's what i feel yeah, uh, yeah in agree. this case so one one just i well want done, to throw, uh, so a lot of if i can ask a last case. question related to this case how many of us are really planning an implant exit yeah. since the young patient and you get to especially if the patient has recovered well and i'm sure uh, these young patients come and eat your head that can i remove my implant especially the ones uh, the group which has just planned only posterior with an index screw uh do you plan implant exit do you convince the patient counsel the patient accordingly no i think one it's very important to understand which level mm -hmm. is this how much is the angle of uh, uh, the the fracture and how much instability it may cause if you remove the implant these two three things are important but yes you can safely uh, remove the implant if there is not much of a wedging they good continue column and if you do the mri at 1 and 1/2 to 2 years around 1 and 1/2 years and you see in between all the levels i think that time if the patient demands you can remove the uh, implant and if you are not done fusion you know in nowadays people really don't want implant and in cases not in cases like this where you really uh, should think about but otherwise in standard cases where there is a small amount of retropulsion not very much angulation angular deformity you, de uh, you you can actually consider removing the implant but uh, if you do a ct scan you should do a mri scan analyze it well dynamic x ray and then uh, but many of yes. two of patients where i removed implants by doing non fusion in a uh, fracture they had a significant amount of back pain after implant removal can it be because of the facet joints which were not used for some time now now they start moving they are giving the pain mm -hmm. this is actually good, a practical good. problem i faced mm -hmm. nice nice but we also don't know the answer I've for never this. tried i have never <laughs> tried <laughs> it's just i said your joints were not moved for a certain amount yeah, of time yeah, your yeah, question to is right to what can be the reason for the back pain after removal of a implant because they get that pain what is the age of the patient That's young patients like uh, one patient was 38 and another patient just now and they are eating my head ki i was not having this pain before now i am having this pain so what so, to... so maybe it's like it's just like any compound fracture when we were using a spanning the joint fixator and we have kept that for 9 months and yes. after that we have removed yes yeah. if you yeah. involve so, knee in a long yeah. fixator knee becomes yeah. stiff and the patient yeah. complains of knee pain similar yes. patients complain and uh, mm. this is after i hear in a lot of conference you can remove the implant i tried in mm. two patient and they are eating so my... what time you have and removed you that after how many one year one year okay good okay. that you have tried now we will not try <laughs> <laughs> normally good learning is okay one and a half year then nene sir you are take yes. on this yeah i think the cause is uh, disc injuries we look at bony fusions but the discs have been injured in these end plate fractures and uh, you you are left with a thoracolumbar disc which is uh, dysfunctional and uh, you know if you just put them on very good rehab protocol they will you know come out of this pain assuming that the mm. fusion fracture has happened right thank you nice, nice. thank you dr pallo for a wonderful case and we move on to the next presenter because time is running we need to move on with dr tushar devres presentation over to you tushar Neeraj is looking like he has just got up from uh, you know good night sleep. Are you in? Uh, you, are you abroad or you are in India, Neeraj? Yeah, I am in India. 
I just shut off uh, my study room because my son was uh, in, in a playing mood. <laughs> okay. So yes, I think Tushar. while Tushar is setting up, unless we are changing to the presenter, we should keep the audience busy. The whole issue of implant exit comes in that you're doing a long fusion and a long fixation and a short, fu short fusion. I think mm -hmm. if you do fusion and a short fixation, you should not really talk about uh, implant exit because it's like uh, it's doesn't add any value to uh, the problem itself. So right. in the fix long to get a big lever arm to uh, you know to avoid doing an anterior reconstruction. There we would expect do a posterior fusion at a short level and you know expect the bones from the front to heal. Leave the facets untouched, put lateral screws, and then do an implant exit. So um, yeah, be very sure at the time of your operation uh, whether you're gunning this patient for an implant exit. You can't do yes. a plan two three years afterwards saying that he wants the implant to be out and I want to remove it because you might end up in a soup. Also, it's very hard to judge fusion. It's not easy easy based on CT and MR to say that the bone uh, that the okay the bone healing you can still see because it's a body of it's a mass of bone, but posterior fusion, very often you get it wrong. Yes. Yet, you remove the implants and you're left with a weak spine. So I think yeah. all of us would be that uh, think multiple times before you actually commit to an implant exit. Tushar, are you ready with your case? Tushar is still missing. Um, you go on with Tushar Pisar? Yeah. That's Tushar Deure. Done, done. Tushar, yes. Yeah. Tushar, are you ready with your for the uh, yes, yes. technical glitch? Okay, yeah. Play, yeah. play, play. Yeah. Sorry. Good. Uh, my... Yeah, yeah, your slides are seen now, Tushar. Yeah. So uh I'll quickly run through the case. He was a 20-year-old male, second engineering student with a severe gradually progressive lower back pain with bilateral lower limb pain, paresthesias, inability to walk. And he had a weakness in his both the lower limbs uh, along with early loss of bladder and bowel control. He had a history of uh, three to four months of loss of appetite, loss of weight around 20-25 kg. He had taken empirical AKT for uh, six to seven weeks by the local orthopedic surgeon before he reached to me in my clinic. He had no relief of pain. He had gradually progressive problem. On uh, examination, his gait was significantly crouched with bilateral foot drop. Uh, his spinal range of motion was severely painful and restricted. Straight leg raise was markedly restricted and neurologically grade 1 power below L4 and uh, hypoastasia along the L5 and S1 nerve root. He had bladder urgency, no complete incontinence or loss of control, but early uh, sign of bladder involvement. This was his MRI, which was done one and a half month back with uh, L5 complete collapse with stretching of the disc, but intact disc spaces with severe cauda compression. So I would like to the how, uh, ask the house what may be the primary uh, possibility of diagnosis in this. Uh, Dheeraj? Uh, so yeah, so first of all, uh, it might be any infection. Uh, yeah, as we all know, it, whatever we see uh, like this, we first is tuberculosis. So second can be any primary uh, tumor as well. So it can be a lymphoma or something like that. Uh, okay. Since it's, it's at the lower part, a cordoma is also one of the uh, possibility. Yeah. So all these are my DDs for this patient. Okay. Can we see the X-ray, uh, Tushar, if it is there? Yes. Yeah, yes. yes. Abhay, sir, anything you want to say? I think the question to be asked is how many of you would delve in diagnostics? like a biopsy, PET scan, bloods, etc. And how many of yeah. you actually just go in and do a diagnostic, I mean, a, a decompressive biopsy, kind of reconstruct, decompress and do a biopsy at the same time. Can so then have... I got his x done yeah. because it was not done beforehand. Only MRI was done. And the x-ray is evident itself. Right. That's good. So can... There is a missing pedicle of hmm. right side L5. 
with a pathological lesion so we got a ct scan done to understand the morphology of the lesion to certain extent which showed stippled calcification intra lesional more towards the possibility of some form of neoplasm so what's what's the next step uh, all of us do pet scan nowadays for all such lesions yes yeah uh tushar pisar pallav what do yes. you say yes every uh, lesion which which looks like a metastasis we do pet scan yeah okay so we got the pet scan done it showed a solitary lesion what is the next step biopsy which form of biopsy will you do a siam guided or a ct guided biopsy yes, as is neurologically compromised okay. so there is no point we have to go and we have to just do a thorough decompression fixation and uh, the, uh, and take you the will not like to know what's the pathology because yeah. he's suffering and having all this for past more than six weeks hmm. so it is not sudden no i i I would like to uh, take a biopsy. I would like to uh, take biopsy uh, closer to the midline. Yes. Yeah. And uh, then go for the uh, uh, procedure, whatever I plan after so that. Probably Pallav has not understood. He thought it is an acute onset deficit, but it is gradual, right, Tushar? Yeah. Gradually so progressive six past six to eight weeks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then. Yeah. yeah. But biopsy because in such case if we get an idea of vascular we, with biopsy we can know the vascularity of tumor type of tumor yes yes definitely you can yeah. plan yeah. more sure what yeah. we are dealing with if we yes. do a yes. biopsy so it turns no, out whether we want to just decompress it whether we want to do unblock also whether we want to just uh, uh, not do just curate it out and reconstruct that so all this uh, de depends upon the biopsy results Yes, yeah. I think biopsy will help uh, if the yeah. yes. that will tell us okay. how much uh, we need to remove, what the extent is, how yeah. large or how wide we should. Yes, yes, okay. yes. So on biopsy, it turned out to be a giant cell tumor of L5 vertebral body. Anyone hmm. go for embolization? Abhay, sir? Yes, if it's a giant cell tumor, it would be definitely worthwhile doing. I mean, the the it puts me on the back foot once it's a giant cell tumor because uh, the onus of the excision becomes very very high on the surgeon because that's the only true treatment, surgical excision. Um, the problem is that this has gone out of the confines of an end block excision. Yes. Whatever you do, yes, uh, yes. outside the lines of uh, <clears throat> of end block. So I can't even do an end block. So here, I think my I would definitely want to if. I mean, the, the the I will benefit greatly if I could give him denizumab, but with this kind of a, a, a neurology, yeah, I so. have the guts to wait on him with denizumab. So in short, uh, embolization followed by a wide marginal resection and yeah. a reconstruction. I would probably do this all from the back. Okay. So uh, we went ahead with the same plan, did a pre-op uh, embolization on the prior evening. Next day morning, we took him in the theater. Did the posterior job first, uh, the spinous process was having a normal bone, but uh, lamina onwards, anterior, everything was pathologically involved. So we did the thorough complete decompression along with one-sided rod and got the complete nerve root uh, uh, visibility from behind. Then we flipped him from the front and I took a help of my oncosurgeon colleague transperitoneal he gave me the access for the l5 with all the major vessels everything dissected along with the ilioinguinal and other nerves uh, this was the entire lesion from the front and after excising it completely it was extending on the left sided iliosos to certain extent very little two to three millimeter so i had to excise the part of iliosos Definitely was under stress to have the flexus which is traversing through it. But fortunately, uh, I could do it uh, completely and then reconstructed it with a anterior strut cage, access the anterior uh, uh, superior iliac spine, the typical iliac crest bone graft, chunk of it to pack in the cage. As I uh, use an expandable cage here, I would uh, say that there is a possibility that we can use a simple Hums mesh case also. 
but what? I wanted it to be yeah. hinged completely because I'll show the X-ray, which everyone will jump on me now. So this was the intro of picture. Yeah. Any any uh, remarks, Abhay sir, Dheeraj, Shailesh? I think uh, it's very important when you're doing a posterior job that time, you should do a discectomy so that you can identify it anteriorly very easily. And yes. you can do a complete. See, when you know the diagnosis is giant cell tumor, first thing should come in mind is recurrence because they are known to recur and then yes. it's yeah. a nightmare. Uh, whatever you give, denosumab or what, that's the important thing. You need to do a complete anterior plus posterior job. Complete wide marginal resection is required in such cases. We have had a couple of cases of GCTs and one case we are having a lot of recurrence and a lot of issues. So, so I think here what you can see the end plates are very well curated. The entire disc, posterior part was of the disc was already excised. Now yeah. the anterior half was half or two third was remaining, which we excised completely. Had a correct good bleeding in plates. Yeah, no, I think you've done a very good job. Anterior plus uh, posterior. Uh, basically, you can even add up a, a additional. Uh, a screw in a screw and rod anteriorly also if you really want to keep it more strong because it's a lumbosacral junction but uh, fair enough if you find it good anterior stability because you are having only one above and one below so yes. that's one thing but uh, if you are using good bone graft probably it will fuse and it will have a good long term outcome but additional screw and rod probably will be useful at times yes any suggestions, Abhay sir? What do you worry for this? Because uh, the fixation is too uh, tacky. I would have gone to the pelvis. I would have used uh, S2 AI screws or maybe yeah. uh, I like screws. Definitely gone to L3 because here saving motion is not at all my prerogative. I would uh, yes. fix bigger. Maybe even the dual rod fixation. Yeah, yeah. So for go one one level up and down. Uh, as uh, uh, as sir said, uh, H two L R iliac and one level up, uh, one one rod extra. Maybe maybe we, we can try uh, all posterior here, but uh, going anterior is also absolutely fine. That is absolutely okay for us. Uh, but uh, sir, my concern is uh, why pre op embolization in GCD? It's not a very uh, vascular tumor assessment. Yes. So you can see here, there is it was very vascular, multiple feeders from the common iliac and every 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 possible vessel you can see all these coils and clips done by the uh, ir guy and i was there in the cath lab when they were doing the embolization it has extreme vascularity now as dheeraj is saying because a lot of orthopedic onco ortho guys don't do vascular uh, because they uh, are treating it yeah. as, but uh, in spine probably it is more safer we have had a couple of giant cells and we have found it extremely uh, a bloodless field when we do the embolization means you can get away but you have to be care careful for bleeding then okay okay fine so this because, is a uh, uh, five year follow up ct which showed a complete bony fusion anteriorly no recurrence he is complete in six years next year uh, to take your point very well abhay sir i would have added considering his age uh, his want of sitting on the floor, Indian mindset, young boy, 19 only, firing his pelvis was the back of the mind uh, situation there. And I had very rock solid uh, stability from the front and back. That was my assumption that time. Though, as you rightly said, I was under stress for first three years. I did a CT every year. And uh, that shown at the end of five years, good uh, complete uh, bony fusion so the point is very well taken now if i have to do it i will not think of all this and i will go at least two above and two below minimum two below minimum maybe a uh, added rod like what dira said yeah because s1 okay. is fused so anyway pelvis is fused the s2 doesn't yeah. make a difference movement will be the same only one above level you are uh, uh, so sacrificing that's the only thing lower is not an issue because it's anyway fused to pelvis but well done very well done well done yeah yeah no yeah, recurrence so that's the best thing which has happened and uh, yeah. obviously you have saved the level as well so that's yeah yeah so that's extra advantage yeah piece. so nothing beyond this we could have achieved yeah, yeah. thank you tushar for a good a great presentation and thank we move you. on to dr tushar pisar's case is the last case of the day today yeah and the discussions are
still very uh, interesting and interactive. So the last case. Yes. MS Dhoni, MS Dhoni is there now to finish the uh, tournament today. So. My screen is visible. Yes. 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 Put on a. Is it on a presentation mode? Yes. No. Yes. No. No. Now it's on presentation. Yes. So let me just. We have kept all the best cases today for in you know for interaction and interest of the delegates. Yeah, all cases are nice. Good. Yeah. Tushar, it was in play mode. No, what happened? No, actually, the thing is, uh, all the uh, pictures are coming on the what I have written. That's okay, why. I've, okay. Uh, a twenty-four-year-old male present with a road traffic accident with paraplegia and bowel bladder involvement. This was an X-ray I got from Kolhapur. So this is a lateral X-ray of a patient, uh, and patient is having grade zero power. So I was like, Ki, with this X-ray grade zero power, I would like to see AP X-ray. So this what this is what happens when you see only one one part of X-ray. So that's why this picture is very important. When you can see literally, this is a scenario in this case. That's why I ask for an AP X-ray. So this was his AB X-ray. That boy was literally torn inside, literally from mm. second rib till the uh, L2, L3 vertebra. So you see the ribs from L, L uh, second from second rib to 12th rib. It was completely uh, separated from the midline. So it, this is an X-ray picture. So now any comment about this? Fix it. And we are very concerned for this because it's a very high grade fracture dissociation or dislocation. It's not only uh, fracture. At the same time, we have to be concerned for the vascularity and uh, vessels in front. Also, the uh, intra-abdominal uh, blood organ injuries will be yeah, organ injuries also. All these things are important. First thing is uh, vitally how the patient is we need to do a CT abdo pelvis also CT chest chest looks quite okay here but these are the things which are very very important we need to study the anterior structures first before we plan to intervene because definitely there is a cord injury there is dural tear there is going to be a lot of things which are already ongoing there so before we yeah. Yeah, all these things are very fast we need to plan so, I, I think the moment we receive this x-ray, the first thing I tell the patient is don't shift. First, stabilize the patient because yeah. there is very less hope as far as the neurology is concerned. But uh, yeah. staying him vitally stable is, I think, the paramount importance because this is just a, a eye-catching. You can see a very bad Good point. spine injury, but a very bad uh, intra-abdominal injury, a chest injury, along with a badly comminuted uh, rib fractures leading to hemonemothorax. So I think not shifting is the first thing we need to tell. Stabilize the patient and see the patient after 24 to 48 hours. Very rightly said, promote life versus limb and limb is gone. We need to think about life first. Do the best possible resuscitation wherever the patient is first. Get him better, get all the vitals and then plan for the surgery or shift the patient. A uh, patient was breathless initially. You see his uh, X-ray. You said chest is fairly clear. That's why you ha we have to do a chest X-ray, in uh, I mean, dedicated chest X-ray because this was yeah. his chest X-ray picture. That, that was misleading. But this, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this X-ray. Okay, extremely interesting, huh? Yes. So good, and you good point for orthopods actually. Yes, you see yeah, seeing the uh, chest from the abdomen and uh, yeah, so good, good points, good. So there was a hemonemothorax and that patient's HB was 7. So he lost a lot of blood. Fortunately, though, there was no abdominal injury, but there was chest was very bad. So first, initially, immediately ICD was placed. He was vitally stabilized. Everything was under control and then he was shifted to Pune. Okay. So this was his MRI picture. The MRI quality is not good because it was done there. Do they have a coronal? 
uh, actually for, unfortunately i don't i think there was there is one coronal but no uh, coronal they, they have not done coronal imaging that's a problem the peripheral mris they don't do coronal imaging and they have written just a sagittal imaging uh, this um, this was a conclusion which they have written there is just grade 1 anterior lysthesis of l1 or l2 the posterior uh, superior border was compressing on the conus with cord edema and mild paravertebral and paraspinal soft tissue edema can you believe with this kind of x ray picture there is just a mild uh, injury to the soft tissue tushar uh, this case in many aspect a good case for a, a radiology conference yes actually <laughs> okay <laughs> and it is so, important to discuss with the radiologist actually because they are the ones who are sitting there and monitoring yeah. the importance of uh, uh, ap view then coronal cuts yes. yeah all these things are extremely so important. they have not mentioned about translation the uh, medial lateral translation in this case in the coronal image so this is his mri picture final conclusion so abhay sir your take on this No, I think this. Uh, I think it's a great case to share because it draws on so many important things that, as as a spine surgeon, you need to be aware of. You can't just be looking at the spine, and you definitely can't be relying on radiology reports because radiologists are not clinicians, and you have to learn how to see your read your own MRI scans and read your own X-rays and draw your own. Yes. So zoom out yes. a picture rather than just focus on the spine. So, what's your plan at this moment, Dheeraj or Pramod? yeah so so we have as we have to, we have discussed we have to do hrct of chest abdomen pelvis rule out rule out any associated injuries of the face and major uh, uh, limbs we have to screen with the x rays if everything is ruled out then we have to manage this if everything is clear yes. uh, then we have to manage this so we have to fix this uh, uh, two to three level above and below yeah yes. that would be okay, my man. plan and so uh, shailesh has a good technique which is already been yes. described for this we can utilize that and uh, or whatever you might be comfortable with yeah so this is actually his clinical picture on table with mild paraspinal injury muscle injury actually it was torn so badly no landmarks nothing 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 for a dissection also and the radiologist has reported just a mild paraspinal edema and swelling so unfortunately tushar this is 0.5 0.8 tesla mri yes so the quality of image itself is a challenge for the radiologist to report also but clinically it is ghastly so this is what i was able to do you see the first uh, x ray there one pedicle is totally on the yes. right side the right side and, yes fortunately i got uh, i was able to put a screw in the left side this is a, a cm picture so it is in a prone position so i was able to cannulate the left side pedicle so i was able to preserve few levels but i can you the case, can you elaborate your reduction technique so two rod technique i put a rod on a means on right side two screws i engaged with a rod then lower two uh, screws i engaged with another rod wise grip is the instrument which we use which i use to correct the deformity means i just distracted with the help of wise grip and then tried to correct the coronal deformity fortunately anterior posterior deformity was not much so i was able to reduce with this technique this is well described technique by uh, sanjeeti people harshalesh sir so that's what i did in this case and when i did fortunately i was able to cannulate the pedicle screw means i was able to pass the rod on that side on the left side then i put a rod on the right side and i tried to cannulate the i removed the rod on uh, the left side and i cannulated the screw l2 screw means the fracture vertebra screw on the left side so this is how, how i did that surgery only problem was the transverse process everything was broken so putting screws was also challenge parse mm -hmm. fractures were there multiple uh, i means bony landmarks was al al almost gone mm -hmm. so fortunately i was able to put the good uh, purchase and the uh, pedicle screw size is not 6.5 even though patient uh, was a male 24 year uh, because uh, 5.5 mm was a uh, tap was going so tightly i have to put 5.5 okay. screws so i have not I want to ask everyone whether you will do decompression in this or you will just fix it and come out uh no i will like to do a local decompression as well as see suppose the uh, many times we can save a root also 
Okay. It's it's less likely, but yes. we just decompress the neural elements. That's absolutely fine for a posterior decompression. It's a posterior laminate to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you, Pramod? Ah, uh, it's a tough question. Given the choice, I will not. Because it is going to fir Ganga Jamuna Bhani hai. So I am sure anyways it will do it. But uh, an intact lamina kind of acts like a tamponade. So, but yes, given a choice, no. But uh, you, I know we, uh, we as a surgeons are emotional also. We would like to do some neural decompression. And just yes, hope, yes. Hope against hope that it yeah. might help the patient. Yeah, Dr. Nene. I think I'll end up needing to do it to get my reduction because I normally do the uh, Bombay Hiran, exactly. not the slick. <laughs> so I just use, put screws in and reduce it. And to do that, I need some posterior elements to be out. And uh, so I would end up doing some decompression at least and I'll have to face the music. Yes. <laughs> so that's not the end. Fortunately, patient has not shown any sign of recovery for three weeks. But then recovery... See? Yes. See, we have to decompress. That's why. Yes, I, we did. <laughs> I did a posterior decompression, and it's there was a here. Yeah. I pushed the neurons in, then sutured. Everything was the play. Play was. He good. was absolutely zero, and this is the point, neurology yes. of God. So this is oh, his, uh, wow, picture. amazing! Huh? You have a magician hand, huh? No, it's it's a God's grace. It's no one can do for a neurological or anything, right? Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah. I never believed he will recover, but fortunately he mm -hmm. recovered because of root Zabar fever. Us. Whenever there Zabar is a root fever, you have to give a fair chance for the uh, de means you have to do decompression properly in okay. in order to give a fair chance. Yeah, you have given him life two times. <laughs> Sir, he is uh, working no. better than my lumbar decompressions also. So not two times. There is a uh, show is still going on. You have to okay. listen again. Okay. Tell us what's happening. Okay, man. okay. Right. So. So this is his one year post op picture. So the rod is fine. broken. Fine, fine, that's fine. So fine. what what uh means can we do at this stage? If it is not painful, just leave it. It, it, it was not okay. painful. Patient was doing all the activity. Only <laughs> one rod is broken? Yes. According to me, only one rod according to this X ray. Okay, then wait for a second rod breakage. And then decide. Yes. <laughs> so this is his two years picture. He came to me with second rod breakage. There was a click sound and he felt some pain. But, but pain there was pain, pain when he came to you. This time he had pain. Yes. Okay. But he, he said I am able to do most of my activities, but there is pain. So what to do? Take a flexion extension view. Yeah, dynamic will help. Okay. Or strengthening, ask him to exercise well, make his muscles work better. He's like, yeah, I'm a girl for a marriage. I don't want that clicking side during my initial few days after marriage. No, I think uh, the uh, fusion is looking good. You can exchange the rods and add some bone graft. Probably that will be maybe a stronger rod and... Uh, you can add up some bone grafting. That is what... Actually, uh, sir, do you think there is a bit rod breakage on the uh, one-year post-op x-ray on other side also? If I analyze retrospectively, something like that, because I was thinking yeah, maybe... Probably, is... probably, yes, there is some something which is very close to, if you very minutely see, it looks like there is something happening to the other rod also. Yes. But in fact... Uh, I agree that that in time. fact, at the end of one year, if there is a rod broken and the patient had seen, I would have got a dynamic at that time. Probably the second hidden kind of a rod breakage could have been very well evident. But clinical, we go clinically. Clinically, patient yeah, has yeah. no pain. So, Susha, exactly, yeah. he was across the desk mainly. So, there is a, a non even there. Yes, definitely. So, oh, uh, yes. At that disc level... Uh, cure it out that disc, pack with a bone graft or put a small mesh cage. That should solve yes. the problem. Yes. But without exactly. pain, how are you going to convince him that there is one rod which is there in place? No, but uh, we can't leave. Uh, see, because the, the rod has broken, there is a non-union or pseudo-arthrosis. It is going to be an unstable scenario. We can't keep it like that. 
Yes, but I kept it like that. At two years, this is a picture. Uh-huh. Abhay sir, with your experience. You are again lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I easily yeah. to convince for a rod exchange, and at one year, if I had a rod breakage, it's impossible that fusion has happened. So it's a clear cut sign of pseudo arthrosis, and sooner or later, in a young guy, you don't have to do it. So actually, they come asking for uh, you know for surgery. Except that when I do the surgery, I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm thinking cobalt chrome rods. Maybe you span that because I am not so into to now mess with his neural structures and go across the conus or across the thetal yeah. into an interbody because I've you know I've been once lucky I don't want to you know push my fate so I would probably do posterior bone graft and maybe uh, span with a double rod or something like use use some kind of a yeah that is also absolutely fine sir right so I uh, uh, so I did same. I exchanged rod with a cobalt chromium, and I like crease bone grafting was done posteriorly, uh, at uh, at the end of two and half. It means like after breaking the rod, after second rod breakage. So this is his. This like, is how many months right now? Now two months after uh, rod exchange. So wait for a th- now again breakage. <laughs> no, but bone grafting it's is because done. I have a similar kind of experience, and then I have to go entirely. So from my own there is also, case. if you will see, compare this X-ray with the previous X-ray. There is some yes. amount of opening up, angulation, opening up. Yes, yes. At the uh, disc level. So okay. I would actually okay. put a bone at the inter. Uh, in, I would do an interbody fusion. Plus now he's married, so <laughs> 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 just watch this space, everyone. <laughs> It's an interesting and challenging case. I think very well yes, done. Yes, yes. Well done. Very very nice. ways to speak uh, of Chailesh, it was a fantastic uh, exposition today on Spine Connect. And I must congratulate all the four presenters. It was like the, the top, top tier cases in Maharashtra, if you may, you know, what we had some uh, exotic uh, fractures in young people, you know, out of pure osteoporosis. We had um, osteo- uh, uh, traumatic fractures and we had a massive GCT, which has got a textbook result from Tushar. So, um, I think this was a great learning evening. Um, POS, thank you so much. Shailesh, would you want to uh, have some closing remarks? No, I think I would like to thank all the audience and uh, the uh, co-faculty for the beautiful presentation and great discussion. A lot of learnings from this and we connect again uh, soon. Uh, this is the third series of Spine Connect and uh, we will be more and more discussing about the cases which are there in routine practice for all of us. Thank you once again and have a good night. Thank you. 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 Night. Night.